we had a uh, obviously a great win for our program uh, Saturday night. Thought our thought our guys handled uh, the week of adversity as far as being displaced there for the hurricane. They did a great job of coming out and focusing on uh, trying to get a win. Uh, played played well in a lot of ways, uh, and uh, fortunate to uh, you know come out of Kansas there with a the victory. But uh, hopefully. Hopefully this uh, we can use this as a uh, program builder as we continue to go forward and our program grows. Uh, but uh, very, very excited about what we were able to accomplish Saturday. Coach, thank you so much. Our uh, first questions come from um, Alan Blondin with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, congratulations on the big win. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, uh, so uh, I guess first thing I was going to ask you, so w uh, where do you uh, – how do you go about finding a Kansas Jayhawk pinata? Well, that's a secret that we only only know above uh, in, in our uh, in our room, so we don't give out our secrets there. But uh, it was something that one of our coaches came up with and figured it out. So uh, didn't know it was going to make uh, uh, some national news there, but it did. So we'll uh, we'll have to make sure that uh, we're a little bit better uh, secretive next time we do something like that. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, because I, I wouldn't know where to find one of those, personally. Um, so, uh, uh, I guess going from a, uh, a Power 5 opponent to an FCS opponent in the next week, um, you know, kind of a natural tendency probably to have a letdown. So, is, is there anything you can stress to the team that you think uh, you'll be able to avoid that letdown? Well, that, that's the big challenge. Uh, you know, sometimes when you, you when you win one of those, you think you're better than what we are. And, and truth be told, we you know, we were fortunate to win it. Kansas is obviously building their program as well, uh, but we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, and, if, and if they didn't make, if they didn't make uh, as many, we'd have lost that game. Uh, you know, you can look at our kicking game; we made so many, and and uh, we were we were terrible on third down on offense. So there's a lot of areas that we have to improve. So uh, our big challenge, Alan, was just talking to them about, hey, we won, but we didn't play very well. And our goal each week is to play. Uh, our very best, and we've not done that yet. So, uh, hoping that the guys have bought into that because Norfolk State's a good team. They about beat Old Dominion first week of the year. They're three points away from being two and zero themselves. You know, beating a, a group of five teams. So, uh, they're not a, they're not your average FCS program. They're doing a good job there. So, we get we got a lot. Of, we have to do to work on to to be better. All right. Yeah, you can probably always point to the Western Illinois game in 2017 for. I guess uh, yeah. admonition there. Um, yeah, we got got embarrassed. Yeah, uh, and then the other thing, just uh, what you know, how much do you know about Norfolk State? Have you had a uh, a chance to even look at what they do and and what kind of opponent they'll be? Yeah, they've got uh, they got several they've got several uh, actual uh, FBS transfers in their program on offense and defense, so they've got some really a lot of talent. Um, they're coming off a huge win over uh, a Division II school. And then, as I said, they played their first game there. And got, uh, Old Dominion 24-21 was the final there. They had a chance to win it late in the game and couldn't pull it out. So they're a talented team. Uh, they play extremely hard. Uh, they do have some playmakers on offense. Uh, quarterback's very athletic. So they're going to present a challenge. I think it's, it's the most athletic quarterback we've seen this year. Uh, and, they've, and they do have some dynamic receivers. I think athletically overall – uh, Skill-wise, uh, maybe is as athletic as we've seen. I'm not saying they're as good as certain players, but as athletic on uh, both sides of the ball. So that'll be our challenge: is uh, trying to find some ways to uh, slow them down a little bit. All right, coach, and probably my last one. Um, you guys, um, after throwing the ball, I think 43 times in week one, you threw it maybe 14 last week. Is was was that by design? Were you were you uh, a little wary of the amount of times you threw it in week one, or did it just the game played out that way? Well, I don't think you – I mean, I don't want to have to throw the ball 43 times. That The game, the way it flowed last week, sort of dictated. I wish we were more balanced. Uh, but I don't like having four interceptions. So uh, uh, this coming week we knew we had to try to keep them off the field, Kansas off the field, uh, because they would eventually wear us down with our lack of depth defensively. And so going into the game, uh, I'm not saying we wanted to throw it only 14 times, but there, there in the fourth quarter, we wanted to try to control the clock, and and uh, I think we threw it maybe one time in the fourth quarter, and we were we were moving the ball pretty well, um, you know, running it. So I wasn't about to screw it up, and so I'd like to be more balanced there, obviously, and, and put the ball a little bit more air. We missed some big plays early in that game that could have made it a little bit better 
advantageous for us is we missed some passes that had a chance to put us ahead by you know more than a, a score and we didn't do it and so I just felt like we've got to try to uh, win the game on the ground and, and that's what we did, we decided to do and was able to do. Hey coach thank you. Thank you. All right thank you um, Alan we have time for another set of questions here from uh, Derek Asbury with the Post and Courier. Uh, please go ahead Derek. Thanks, thanks. Uh, Coach, obviously you mentioned earlier uh, about the uh, hurricane. Uh, briefly, uh, what modifications did you guys have to make to your travel schedule or just practice schedule uh, to avoid it? Well, we, we left we left out on Monday um, um, right before the evacuation of the uh, the two lanes where they evacuated there, both both, both lanes going one way. And so the uh, team left about 11.15. Uh, it took us about six hours to get to Greenville. Uh, and then, uh, so we were practiced at uh, two different high schools, and we practiced at uh, two different col actually three different colleges. <clears throat> and so we were practicing at a lot of different times, you know. So based off of when the colleges or the high schools would allow us to get there, so that was out of routine. So we practiced 8:30 to 10:30 one night, then 6:30 to 8:30. Then we were, then we were like two to four, and then uh, there was an 11 to one in there at some point. So a lot of different random times, but uh, our guys. Uh, we're able to, you know, focus in on Saturday. I think once we got out to Kansas on Friday and we got into like a normal weekend routine, our guys sort of settled down. The biggest, the biggest cheer they had is on Friday before we left. We told them we'd be able to come back to Myrtle Beach, and they were uh, pretty excited about that because they they were tired of staying in the hotel. Yeah, and then I mean, obviously, you know, with the mistakes and everything, uh, what can you take away about just the uh, uncertainty there and trying to avoid the hurricane and everything, but still being able to, you know, pull enough together to pull out such a big victory? Well, I think I think that shows I think it shows we got some resilient young men. I think it shows that we've got some guys that uh, are really trying to do the things we're asking them to do. As far as you know, is what we're coaching. Uh, our effort was good. We we had, when we made a ton of mistakes the first week. We made some more this week, but they were less. So I, I think we're learning how to play a game uh, and compete and and play at a high level and focus at a high level. But I also I think it shows you that uh, you know those guys believe in each other too and. Um, we had a lot of excuses if we couldn't win the game. You know, you had a lot of excuses why. Everybody could say, oh, you did this, oh, you did that. But then today, you know, our guys, you know, found a way. So I, I like the resiliency of them. I like how they 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 sort of flow with the flow with the punches a little bit, roll with the punches a little bit. Just no matter what happened, they try to get better, which is what, you, what we've been trying to sell. And, Coach, uh, last quick question. Um, how close uh, is uh, Sam Denmark to uh, being able to suit up and uh, play on Saturday? Uh, well, he played the last couple games. He played. He played Saturday. We missed him on two. He had. He was wide open twice, and we couldn't hit him. He got fastest guy on our whole team, and we can't. We couldn't. We couldn't. Uh, we hadn't overthrown him yet, and we overthrew him twice in the game. So um, he's gotten better. So uh, had a, had a couple chances at some big plays. We didn't hit him, and we'll continue to put him in some positions as we go forward, uh, as he's learning and get more comfortable with what we're doing. So I, I think you'll see some of his play increase.